Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today we'll be talking remotely with Dr. Craig McAllister. Dr. McAllister did his medical school training at the University of Washington. He then completed an orthopedic residency at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and from there a fellowship at the Cleveland Clinic in hip and knee reconstruction. Today, Dr. McAllister practices orthopedic surgery specializing in hip and knee reconstruction in the Seattle area. Dr. McAllister is also president of Operative, a company that specializes in developing new techniques in hip and knee reconstruction. This includes partial knee reconstruction as well as computer-aided navigation. Uh, in his role as president of Operative, Dr. McAllister also trains surgeons in these new techniques. Thanks for joining us, Dr. McAllister. Good morning, Randall, and thank you for having me this morning. Well, Dr. McAllister, what I thought we would talk about today is a, a fairly new topic, and that is the topic of minimally invasive knee replacement, or sometimes called partial knee replacement. Um, can you begin by giving us some ideas of how a, a partial knee replacement differs from the ordinary total knee replacement? Well, I think the answer to that basically boils down to two general areas. The first area is the partial knee replacement really retains more of the patient's native knee. The components are very small and they're really fitted to the native bone. Also, the rest of the soft tissues around the knee, the capsule, the extensor mechanisms, the extensor mechanism, the quads mechanism, the kneecap, the entire lateral compartment is retained and feels more normal to the patient. But certainly the one structure that's gained the most uh, notoriety in terms of helping the patient maintain a knee that feels like their knee is the anterior cruciate ligament. The partial knee replacement retains the anterior cruciate ligament. There are no well-accepted knee replacements that retain the anterior cruciate ligament. And a lot of studies and a lot of um, orthopedic surgeons believe that patients who keep their anterior cruciate ligament have a much more normal feeling knee. It's a knee that has a better range of motion and a knee that retains its proprioception. Proprioception is the ability to understand where our knee is in space, the ability to be, feel coordinated and agile with the knee. So certainly the partial knee replacement leaves the patient with a more normal, natural feeling knee compared to a total knee. Well, now I think a lot, of, a lot of what you've just described probably answers this question, but I think one question patients are going to have is, uh, what are the advantages over a partial knee replacement um, when you compare that with a total knee replacement? Well, let me start by first pointing out that traditional full knee replacements are still the gold standard of the industry. The huge majority of patients, easily over 85% of patients, really who are going to have a knee re replacement will need to have a full knee replacement. It's the most commonly done type of knee replacement in, uh, in the United States today. All orthopedic surgeons who graduate from a standard orthopedic residency know how to do, it, how to do a knee replacement. They're familiar with them. They trust the track record of traditional knee replacements. And still, for most patients, that's going to be the best answer. However, about 10 to 15% of patients who have arthritis that's severe enough to warrant a knee replacement have their arthritis really just in one part of the knee, usually the medial compartment. And those patients, there is an alternative called the partial knee replacement. Probably the biggest difference between a partial knee replacement and a traditional knee replacement is simply the size of the components. They're much smaller. And when the partial knee replacements are placed, they are fitted more to the patient's native anatomy as opposed to um, re-cutting the bone to uh, receive a whole new knee replacement. The other big difference with partial knee replacements, of course, is the surgical dissection is much less. Uh, the amount of dissection that's required, the amount of exposure that's required, the, um, um, the fact that we only have to get to the medial compartment of the knee, all of that translates into an earlier range of motion, less post-operative pain, and a more normal feeling knee for the patient. But certainly the structure that's uh, received the most attention when it comes to understanding why a partial knee replacement feels so much more normal than a total knee replacement is the anterior cruciate ligament. Our orthopedic science, our wealth of orthopedic literature and certainly the experience of all the orthopedic surgeons out there has confirmed that the anterior cruciate ligament is an incredibly important structure when it comes to what we call proprioception. Uh, to explain that, let me, let me emphasize that the anterior cruciate ligament is not simply a rope between two bones. It is actually a neurological structure. It has nerves in it that help us sense stretch 
and help us understand where our knee is in space. It contributes significantly to our sense of agility and coordination. And I think that most of us feel like the anterior cruciate ligament, in addition to the simple reality of the dissection and the amount of surgery, is probably the main explanation for why a partial knee replacement feels so much more normal than a total knee replacement does. Now you also mentioned that, that when you do a partial knee replacement, because you're using a minimally invasive techniques and the incisions are smaller, there's less bone removed, and, and it's in some ways a smaller operation in terms of tissue damage. You mentioned that, that patients could have this procedure done as an outpatient. Um, explain a little bit of that. What, what goes on when you do one of these uh, uh, partial knee replacements as an outpatient? Well, that's a good question, and I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, obviously, joint replacements today are most commonly done in the hospital, and that's for good reason. Hospitals are good places to be when you need to be there. But there are some disadvantages to being in the hospital, especially when the surgery doesn't require it. Certainly the history of orthopedic surgery has shown that as multiple surgeries have gone from what was considered to be a required hospitalization to outpatient surgery, that patient satisfaction, complication rates, um, results after surgery, all of that seems to improve. Uh, and I think there are some good reasons for that as our surgeries get smaller, we simply don't uh, cause as much damage to the patient and to the knee. The surgeries are shorter in duration, there's less blood loss, less fluid shift, less uh, need to be in the hospital. Those patients who have outpatient surgery mobilize quicker, they go home into their own environment, they eat their own food, they're allowed to take their own medications. Um, reasonable number of advantages that patients simply appreciate. And then there are some uh, measurable uh, improvements in terms of risk for the patient, there are just certain elements about being in the hospital that contribute to risk. Um, multiple different nurses, communication errors, um, exposure to resistant bacteria, um, <clears throat> people who aren't as familiar with the patient's medical history as the patient goes through their hospitalization. Um, there are really good reasons to be in the hospital when a patient is sick enough to require being in the hospital. But I think all surgeons out there recognize that when a patient doesn't need to be in the hospital, they're safer at home. Well, I think you've, you've laid out a reason to consider uh, a partial knee replacement in terms of a smaller operation, less tissue damage. How does that translate into the post-operative recovery for these patients? How long does it take to get over this operation? And how might the, the rehab differ a bit from having a total knee replacement? Good question. Um, Certainly, when we're doing joint replacements, whether they're total knee replacements or partial knee replacements, the most important consideration has to be our long-term results. How long is the joint replacement going to last? How well is it going to function for the patient over the 10, 15, and 20 year course? That being said, however, for patients, the early post-operative rehab their, the amount of time it takes to get back to work, the amount of time that they're going to spend in physical therapy, the amount of uh, time that they're going to require narcotics, not be able to drive, not be able to engage in family activities, uh, those are all very important. So if there's an opportunity to do a surgery that will enable patients to get back to those activities faster and still obtain gold standard results, state-of-the-art results in the 10, 15 year sequence, then uh, I think it it's important to look at the short-term rehab as well. Well, I think most patients are now asking themselves after, after hearing this, you know, why wouldn't I want to have a partial knee replacement versus a, a total knee replacement? And I guess that brings up two questions. And, and the first question is, 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 what are the downsides of the partial knee replacement? That's a very important question because there can be some definite downsides to a partial knee replacement. Certainly one of them is the fact that the partial knee replacement truly is only appropriate for 10 to 15 percent of patients with osteoarthritis. When the patient becomes so motivated to have a partial knee replacement, and maybe sometimes when the surgeon is so enthusiastic about the results of his partial knee replacements, sometimes the partials are done in patients who really shouldn't have them, and that translates to early failures in those patients. One of my most favorite things that I'll point out to patients is that the only thing worse than a large operation is a small one that doesn't last very long and then the large one shortly thereafter. So it's critically important for the surgeon to be really careful in picking which patients the, that are going to get to, are going to get a partial knee replacement. The other disadvantage to a partial knee replacement is that the patient really does keep the rest of their knee. 
I know for the most part that seems like one of the advantages, but if the rest of their knee is painful, if the rest of the knee is inflamed, uh, they can have discomfort in that knee just like they would with a normal knee, whereas a, par a total knee replacement is the one that's the most likely to give complete relief throughout the entire knee. And lastly, the other disadvantage to a, a partial knee replacement is that it is a technically more demanding type of procedure to do than a traditional knee replacement. One, um, there are a reasonable number of surgeons that do a spectacular knee replacement and they may do 20 or 30 a year. Well, if only 10% of those patients are appropriate for partial knee replacement, they're simply not going to have the volume to be comfortable with and to be able to do partial knee replacements on a routine basis. Um, it is a, because it's a more exacting kind of technique, any errors can translate to early failure. So it's not unusual for surgeons to become frustrated with their results after partial knee replacements and to simply abandon the operation and to choose to do total knee replacements in their patients. Now we probably ought to explain a little bit more about computer navigation to, to patients that aren't familiar with that. Can you elaborate on that a little bit about what that technique or, or what that piece of machinery allows you to do um, that's different than in the traditional way we used to do total knees? Well, first of all, Randall, just to clarify one of the points in your question, um, I wouldn't really say that minimally invasive surgical techniques or computer navigation are different from the way we used to do it so much. They're really different from the way these operations are typically done now in the United States. Easily over 95% of knee replacements done today are done with traditional techniques that do not employ minimally invasive surgical methods and certainly that do not employ computer navigation. Having said that, let me really get to the difference between the uh, computer navigation methods and, and traditional methods. In traditional methods, surgeons are using rods uh, in the, uh, up into the medullary canal of the bone. They're using external jigs, cutting blocks, uh, alignment rods to eyeball the results of their cuts and the implant position. When we use traditional methods, in the best of hands, in the largest centers, and in the most experienced uh, hands, roughly 70 to 74 percent of our knees end up in the alignment that we prefer with the component position that we would like to see. Uh, with computer navigation, uh, the techniques are entirely different. A uh, light emitting diode is attached to the femur and to the tibia, and those diodes communicate directly with a camera in the room, and that camera is attached to a PC computer with a computer program that allows the surgeon to virtually paint a digital image of the extremity that is used to monitor the steps of the operation. In essence, then, there is a digital, real-time feedback on virtually every step of the operation for the surgeon and everyone else in the room to see. So if a cut is a little bit off, that's noticed right away and it's corrected. And the knee can now be built in a very systematic, very predictable, very um, reliable way. The final result, result of all of that is that with computer navigation, 98% of our knees are accurate to within three degrees. The best analogy I can give you is it, it basically boils down to aligning a car. If a, if a person aligning the wheels on a car were using traditional methods, basically the technician would be attaching a, a ruler to the wheel and eyeballing it and making sure that it was aligned. Whereas computer navigation would be more similar to using laser beams and computers to make sure that the wheels are well aligned. We all know what the impact of a malaligned tire is in terms of the tire's longevity and wear. I think it's fair to say that uh, the impact of alignment on partial knees and knee replacements will probably be similar. Well, you know, I think that, again, after listening to this, I think most patients are going to, to, to ask the question, you know, am I a candidate for a partial knee replacement over a total knee replacement? Do you have any advice in terms of, of how a patient might go about trying to figure that out? Do they just depend on their surgeon to tell them that? Do they seek out surgeons that are trained in these two new techniques? And how do they go about doing that? Well, good question. Obviously, there was a time in our history when patients pretty much relied on their doctor and stayed in their communities and, and received the overwhelming majority of their care in their community. And there's a lot of value to that knowing their doctors, knowing their doctors are going to be there at 12 o'clock at night if something goes wrong, being in a familiar environment where their family can help. 
But this is the age of the internet, and it's also an age when knee techniques are evolving very rapidly, and patients are being bombarded with different options, from minimally invasive techniques to different styles of knee replacements being advertised by different implant companies, and computer navigation, and other sources of information that can help drive patients to make their decisions. Sometimes the upshot of all of that is that patients are leaving their home community and traveling to get their knee surgeries done. Uh, there's some value to that as well. Certainly centers that do larger numbers have uh, demonstrated lower complication rates, lower infection rates, and as we've said, uh, surgeon experience is a huge issue in terms of overall results. So somehow I think what we need to do in advising patients about how to seek out their best options is we have to balance the value of being in their home community and do everything that we can to preserve that and yet balance that against the potential for patients to travel and, and ultimately see a better result. The best method from my point of view to do that is a couple of things. One, go to the internet and do your research, but understand that the internet's not really a vetted source of information and understand that the information that, sh that most people are going to get from the internet is not necessarily all that reliable. What I tell my patients is that the internet is a great place to frame your questions, not a really good place to get your answers. Once you've framed those questions, go to your local orthopedic surgeon, go to the surgeon that your primary care doctor has referred you to and ask those questions. As long as you're getting the answers that make sense for you and your surgeon, there are a lot of benefits to staying in your home community. But if the surgeon isn't familiar with the technology, doesn't really feel comfortable about whether or not he has or she has experience to tell if this patient if the patient looking for a partial knee replacement is appropriate for a partial knee replacement, that's a great time to get a second opinion referral. If that second opinion referral has deemed that the patient is appropriate, then it's likely that that surgery will be done by that surgeon. And I will tell you that all of us as surgeons are very familiar with that kind of a referral and very comfortable in commuting back and forth. In that setting, when the patient leaves town to go get a partial knee replacement or any other kind of surgery, they can be successfully and safely handed back to their home community and that home surgeon. Everybody wins in that circumstance. Well, you know, I think this has been an excellent, uh, uh, excellent philosophical discussion as well as a technical discussion about partial knee replacement and how it's changing the culture of orthopedics and how it's changing how we deal with osteoarthritis of the knee. As we close this discussion, is there anything that you think we have not covered that patients need to know if they're faced with making this decision? First, maybe, do I need a knee replacement? And second, if I do need a knee replacement, what should I think about in terms of partial versus total knee replacement? And, and how should I frame that discussion with my surgeon? Well, as I've indicated already, I really do believe that there is an important value to staying in your own community. Whether patients are asking about total knee replacement versus partial knee replacement, computer navigation, non-navigated techniques, or any other uh, questions that they have about their knee, they're always best off to start with their primary care doctor, then go to their community orthopedic surgeon. I think by the time you go to that orthopedic surgeon, you ought, the patient ought to be have had their questions pretty well crafted so that they can ask intelligent questions about their options. Also, understand that partial knee replacement, total knee replacement, these are all elective procedures. Elective, not in the sense that they don't need to be done, they need to be done, but they're elective in the sense that it gives the patient the time and the leisure to fully investigate their options before they make their decisions. I think any elective procedure warrants a second opinion evaluation, and I love it when my, when my patients ask for second opinion evaluations. I give them names of people that I know, and I encourage them to talk to their friends and seek out other names. Uh, so I think that any patient looking at this type of surgery really should, uh, one, go to their orthopedic surgeon in their community, and two, ask that orthopedic surgeon for good second opinion evaluation sources. Well, I want to thank you for sharing this with patients today, and I wish you all the luck in terms of, of transitioning the, the culture of orthopedics into this more high-tech version of, of, in some ways, what we've always done, and that is try to a, attack a problem, in this case, the problem of osteoarthritis of the knee, which is so prevalent amongst the aging population, and try to get better results. So uh, kudos to you and Operative, and look forward to further discussions in the future. Thanks for joining us. Well, Randall, thank you for inviting me, and thank you for the work that you're doing to help get information out there to patients who need that information. Mm -hmm.